Live from the internet, it's the Dr. Tom the Frog Show! Hi-ho, this is Dr. Tom the Frog, and you're watching the Dr. Tom the Frog Show, uh, where we talk about role-playing games. Now, again, we have some amazing art by Jeff Brown. You should totally check out his website. Link at the end of the show. Uh, but I'm super excited because we have on the fantastic game designer known as John Harper. How are you doing, John? I'm doing well. Fantastic, fantastic. Now, your studio is called 17 Designs. What's the deal with that? Why don't you just call it 17? <laughs> uh, it, it sounded too much like a teen magazine when I did when I did that. I, I considered it, but I uh, decided to go a different way. Yeah, you can talk about makeup, though. You could do games about makeup. That's true. That's true. It's very popular. I could branch out, maybe, into that field. <laughs> uh, okay, so now we're, we're, we're going to get down to business here because you have a lot of things, a lot of irons in the fire, as it were. Uh, now, your Patreon is all about putting up prequels and sequels for the most excellent Lady Blackberry. I love blackberries. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Uh, it's uh, Lady Blackbird. Close enough. Close enough. Oh, oh, oh. Well, these crows are always a bothersome for me. So, so these sequels and prequels, are they like Empire Strikes Back or more Phantom Menace? And how much lens flare is involved? <laughs> a lot of lens flare. You can never have too much, really. Uh but uh, they're they're more um, they're a little more like uh, alt, sort of alternate timelines in a way. Um, I don't want to say too much about them. I like people to kind of draw their own conclusions about exactly how the sequels all fit together. But um, yeah, nothing too concrete, but enough of enough threads uh, connecting the pieces where you can link them together if you want, or just play them on their own if you want to do that. Ah, cool. So it's it's kind of like you've just made it into your own Assassin's Creed. You're just going to spit out sequels whenever you want, right? Is that how the <laughs> Patreon goes? Kind of, yeah. It, it initially wasn't all about Lady Blackbird, uh, and that, there's definitely other projects coming down the pipe that are that are not Lady Blackbird related. But um, I got some momentum going on that, so uh, I'm probably going to do a couple more uh, in that universe before changing off to something else. Well, there's there's no complaints from my production assistant, Monkey Rogers. I swear the the guys just run that thing to death, and you've just given him more fuel for the fire. Thanks a lot. Now I'm going to be subjected to more Lady Blackbird. In I, I bet you are. I think Rich holds the record for most sessions of Lady Blackbird uh, in in the world. I'm pretty sure he's he's got the gold medal for that. Huh. So that medal isn't fake. Way to go. Touche. All right. Now you you've got this Kickstarter that's coming up. It's going to be live as soon as this episode goes. It's already it came out like days ago. We go back in time. So this is. This is tape delay for those at home. But but through the magic of production and some other stuff that my production assistant monkey does, uh, that this Kickstarter is live. It's probably funded. I mean, let's be honest here. Uh, it's called Blaze in the Dark. It's all about minions holding torches and endless dungeon crawls until they get slurped up by gelatinous cubes. Is that right? Uh, close. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's called Blades in the Dark, uh, like a knife, a blade. Um, about it's about scoundrels, criminals, uh, in a in a sort of haunted city, um, seeking their fortunes and trying to build their empire and uh, uh, take control of their of their lives. What what makes this game awesome? Um, I think its main distinguishing feature it sort of has two things that I that I think people will like. One is that it really focuses on the team. A lot of role playing games are about a team of people, a team of dungeon crawlers or a team of adventurers, and this game. Um, gives you a lot of support with that. Your team has its own character sheet and levels up alongside the characters and um, there's lots of little bells and whistles you can do that focus on the team and what the team's about uh, as an entity. So you can see it grow over time and um, unlock new features and that sort of thing. Um, and it also has a, a focus on um, something called fictional positioning, which is a little it's a bit of a buzzword in, in indie design circles, but all it means is uh, the game system, when you resolve actions, it really takes into account all the little details, um, or as much detail as you want to take into account for, for your actions, and judging whether things are, are uh, really desperate or under control or, or kind of risky. Um, the game lets you fine-tune those things instead of just having a simple dice roll that says pass or fail. Um, you can get a, a much more nuanced uh, outcome when it's time to roll the dice. Oh now is it does is there a way to resolve fights if somebody says that's not desperate I, I totally attack five guys all the time yeah totally 
that that's a big part of the game. In fact, it's I, I, I think like to think of it as GM training wheels to some degree, where um, a lot of the traditional game master skills of making judgment calls and setting difficulties and those sorts of things, they all those get distributed out among the players um, in the group. So it's everyone's responsibility to judge those things and build a consensus about them and get on the same page. So hopefully, uh, after you play Blades in the Dark for a while, you'll have worked out those GM muscles to some degree and can go off and run other games using those skills. Oh, man, that, that sounds pretty cool. I, I uh, Now, what kind of unlockable stretch goals and all that crazy nonsense do you have going on? Oh, wow, so many. Uh, I've got a lot of support from a lot of great designers. Um, James Stewart and Strash Shimovich and uh, Adam Kobel, um, uh, Chris Bennett, a lot of people are doing um, add-ons and playsets for the game. Chris is doing a cool thing called Moon Over Bourbon Street, which is like a New Orleans um, real-world uh, setting, sort of crime setting. Uh, James Stewart has a really cool one about revolutionaries, uh, sort of overthrowing uh, the crown, and uh, Strash has a has a great set called Dark Age about um, mercenary soldiers, kind of a black company uh, sort of thing. Um, and there's I think about ten of those in the pipeline for the Kickstarter. So hopefully, if it, if it gets uh, funded, um, the game will have lots of awesome supplements uh, ready to go when it comes out. Oh wow, that sounds great! I, I'm super excited for that. Wow. Okay, enough talking about your projects. I've got a serious question for you, John. Are you ready for a serious question? Yes, let me let me prepare. Okay, I'm ready. I, hold on. I don't think you look ready, John. Yep. <clears throat> okay, all right. Here we go. This is your serious question. Would you rather have a rewind or a pause button in your life? Go. Ooh, wow. That's That's a good question. Thank Dr. you. Tom. Crack uh, writing staff here. Mm. I'm going to have to go with Rewind. Okay. Yeah, Why? I think so. Uh, I think it would... Uh, I think it would open up a lot of possibilities. You know, you could, you could, uh, you could vent more easily. It might make me, you know, feel better about... Uh, certain issues, if I could just let it all out and then rewind and it's undone. Huh. That's pretty great. So you just get to be snarky, but nobody knows you're snarky. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that seems like it'd be healthy, right? It'd be very cathartic. Huh. Awesome. Wow. You know what? John Harper, it has been a super exciting time having you on the Dr. Tomlin's Frog Show. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's been a real pleasure. You just watched the Dr. Tom the Frog Show. And we hope that you liked what you saw, yo. But if it was a big waste of your time, well, it's free, so that's not a crime. But if it was a waste of your time, yes, it's free, so that's not a crime.